Hello everyone, I'm Shikhar from Momentum Lab. Today is uh, 15th of August, 2024. So the reason for this video is to uh, show you guys the rebalance that I'm going to do, which is mid of uh, this month. And as I said, I'll be doing uh, only monthly rebalance uh, every month, mid, that is 16th of uh, every month. So by the end of 15th of uh, every month, I'll, do, uh, I'll run this screener and see which stocks are coming up, which stocks are exiting. And every 16th morning, I'll uh, execute the orders. So that's the strategy. First, let me show you the evolution of my strategy since I started. So all were minor tweaks that I did uh, from the initial stage. I'll also tell the rationale behind each of these tweaks. So let's start uh, with uh, the evolution of my strategy and show you what is the current strategy that I'm following. That's one part of the video. The second part of the video is I'll also show you the backtested results of uh, the strategies that I've compared across uh, different uh, uh, types within momentum so that I can give you a, a rational or logical reasoning for moving in this direction. So first, let me start by giving you what was the stage one or the first uh, stage of my momentum strategy. It was based on uh, simple elimination criteria uh, by removing stocks, which are not in uptrend. How do you define uptrend based on their moving averages and comparing their absolute returns over the last one year and also seeing uh, whether they are making new highs or not by comparing their, by seeing how far they are from the 52 week highs. And also we'll add a smoothness factor just to see if they're making a smooth secular uptrend uh, that is defined as number of up days by down days. Very simple factor. Now the universe for me is Nifty 200. So based on this filtration, I've removed certain stocks and the stock which are in uptrend, I've again uh, sorted them by uh, logic, giving the uh, weightage to the last one month, three month and six month returns. All of them are equated based on the last one, three and six month returns. We'll calculate the ranks and based on the ranks, we'll then calculate the final rank and we'll sort the final rank on the descending order, sorry, on the uh, uh, yeah, ascending order, meaning the rank, the stock which has the least rank will come up on the top. The stock, which stock has the least rank? The stock which uh, prominently features uh, highest in terms of returns over the last one, three and six months, that has the lowest returns across all time periods and hence it will have a final rank which is very least. So these are the stocks that are on the top. Now I'll pick uh, the top 15 stocks and I will uh, invest in them. When I do rebalance, uh, the rebalancing frequency was two weeks, every two weeks. Uh, I'll check whether the stocks, the 15 stocks that I purchased, are they in the top 30? The next time that I run, I'll not check whether they're just in the top 15 or not. I'll see that the top 30 are there. This is called as worst rank held. So that we're giving some leeway for these stocks, uh, even if they're underperforming a bit, so that they can recover, recoup and uh, recover. So that's the reason to have worst rank held at 30. So that was the initial uh, stage one strategy. Now this, uh, this strategy evolved as I had more risk-taking ability. Uh, the risk taking ability can come from two ways. One, maybe my portfolio gave more profit so that I was able or confident enough to uh, give back some of the profit in, in turn uh, to create a more long term and sustained strategy. One, or I had more risk taking ability. I felt that, okay, it's time to step up and uh, I can take more risk. Let me loosen up the rules a bit. So that made me move to stage two. When uh, I saw some uh, up movement in my portfolio around 15 to 16%, then I said that let me uh, remove some of the uh, stringent. Rules. The first two that I removed was uh, stock should be about 200 EMA that I removed. And I also removed, uh, moved the over strength held from 30 to 40. And then stage three came. Stage three was uh, especially after the uh, budget session. In the budget session, there was a change in the long term and short term capital gains that made me rethink on the strategy that I'm following. And I wanted to ensure that I'm not losing out on the transaction charges, which will eat up my alpha. So how do I do that? There are a couple of ways to ensure that I don't transact too frequently. The first lever that I had in my control was to uh, increase the rebalancing frequency. Instead of rebalancing it every two weeks, I wanted to rebalance every month. So that in a year, instead of rebalancing 24 times, uh, now the frequency has reduced to 12 times automatically. Uh, so thereby we have less number of churn, uh, less number of stocks get exited or uh, onboarded and hence uh, the transaction charges, the uh, short-term capital gains or long-term capital gains or the STT, CES, etc. will get minimized. That's one way. The second level that I have in uh, increasing or reducing the transactions or churn is by uh, increasing the worst rank held so that I don't remove the stocks immediately if they fell from, uh, let's say, 15 to 40. If I have more leeway, then I have more uh, opportunity to let them still be in my portfolio. So the worst rank held got increased from 40 to 45. And the second thing was the uh, rebalancing frequency changed from two weeks to monthly. So that was the stage, which I'm in right now. I wanted to even further relax it 
or maybe make it even long term uh, generating signals than the medium term to short term right now so what can i do i can play around with the uh, ranking logic that i have right now right now i'm taking one three six month which take very recent moves of mid term to short term though it has its own advantage uh, but it also has its disadvantage in terms of being uh, too uh, noisy you can give more churn and especially with this uh, new rules i felt that uh, it is borderline risky because there can be a difference of two and half to two to three and a half percent difference uh, between an index and a DIY strategy, assuming both of them, let's say if you as a retail investor are following the same strategy as let's say any index is following by yourself, if you're trying to replicate it, then you need to pay extra or you need to make at least two to three and a half percent more than what the index is making so that you are just breaking even with respect to uh, that index. The reason being the mutual funds and ETFs are at an advantage of not being charged uh, or taxed on whatever churns that they are doing. They can do as many churns as, as they can within a year. They still may not be charged and we only end up paying the bottom is the expense fee that we pay per year. But whereas if you as a DIY investor, if you're doing the same number of churns in a year or over a period of time, then you are, you need to end up paying all these uh, transaction charges, STTs, uh, CES, STCG and LTCG. That's one. The dividend is also another problem. Like dividends, they can uh, the mutual funds or the ETFs can get and they can re reinvest into the growth plan without any uh, charge being paid. Whereas uh, for retail investors like us, the dividend is charged at the tax tax slab that we are in. So it is win win for the uh, index and mutual funds. So if you are a DIY investor, if you want to do a strategy which beats the index, uh, then you'll have to be uh, even more cautious to ensure that all these uh, loops are plugged in so that you are genuinely having an alpha and which can run for a longer period of time. So that's the whole idea. So let's see what I did to move from short to mid midterm signals to medium term to long term signals. So one way what I did was to uh, instead of doing one, three, six month absolute returns over the last uh, one, three, six months and getting the ranks, I moved it to six and 12 months. So I'm not looking at one year data of the returns as well as the last six months data. So you can take one year as the long term and six months as the mid term. Now, based on these two returns, I judge a stock. I'll calculate the rank for 12 months. I'll also calculate the rank for six months and I'll give uh, equal weightage for both 12 months and six months. And then I calculate the final rank. And I see uh, based on the final rank, uh, top 15 stocks, the worst rank held will be 45 and the rebalance will happen monthly. So these are the three changes that have happened. And I hope, I hope that this is the final uh, evolution in my strategy if uh, by god's grace that uh, there's a significant alpha or positive returns then i might even reduce the 45 worst rank held meaning i'm i'll be even okay if let's say i have the uh, ability to take even more risk maybe the worst rank held can uh, go even bit uh, deeper maybe rebalancing monthly maybe i don't know i'm not sure at this point of time but monthly looks fine let's leave it at that and maybe in the immediate future, if I have sufficient uh, profits or risk taking ability, the stocks within the top 20% from its 50 to week high also can go down. I mean, I can take up to 25% or 30% from its 50 to week high. So these are the evolution directions that I had I have in mind that can happen. This all depends on how much uh, risk taking ability that I have. The risk taking ability can come if I see uh, sufficient portfolio uh, returns in my uh, strategy uh, that can be measured directly by the portfolio heat that I have. So this is the portfolio here that I measure right now. It is pretty well uh, for the loss that I incur right now. If all the stocks get exited is much uh, less than the profits that I'm having right now. So if this, uh, with this as a uh, number, this is the number that guides me to tell if I can dilute my strategy and be more long-term oriented. So if you see my strategy has evolved from being a short-term strategy to slowly ensuring that I'm not falling off guard. I'm protecting my profits very closely. Once I have sufficient profits, then it became a little bit relaxed and become medium term. And then now if more profits are there, then it become long term. And then uh, that's a stable strategy that I wanted to follow. I think this comes from the trading background that I had initially, uh, uh, where I always give importance to the risk. Uh, risk is paramount. If the capital is protected, then we'll think about uh, multiplying it. So with that as a philosophy in my brain, ingrained in my brain, I started out that way. First, start very tightly not rock the boat. Once you see certain profits, then maybe you can slowly uh, build on top of it. So that's the whole idea of the strategy. Now let's see what are the stocks that are coming up based on this screener. Now, as you can see, there are four stocks 
vacant. These four stocks are because of uh, the stop loss being hit for the last one month. Now, for these four stocks, I do not buy them immediately the next day. I wait for the rebalance day to occur and then see. Because it helps me naturally to move into cash position. If let's say if some black swan event happens or volatility increases and if more and more stocks are getting hit, then I don't want to again enter and again exit within that one month. I want to see see how it plays out for the one month. And then after one month, if let's say if there's no more uh, stocks falling and the market is above the 100 EMA, I go long. If the market is below 100 EMA, I move into cash or I exit. So that's the strategy that I follow or just I stay put. Now with this, uh, there are four stocks out there. Market is clearly 100 EMA. And let's see what all uh, stocks are coming up right now. I'll quickly show the strategy that uh, the so this is the query that I run. So I think this code has already been shared with uh, you guys. So a lot of people already have uh, access to this code. Uh, so all the tweaks are already available in here. So nothing to worry. If you have this code, you can straight away run it. If you do not have this code, let me know in the uh, comment section. I'll uh, put a, I'll put a Google form so that you can just share. I'll give you an email ID. I'll give you access to this sheet. Now the only tweak that I'm doing right now is I'm removing the one month and three month. I am now putting six month and 12 month. So when I run this code, you see only the six month and 12 month. This nine month, you can ignore. This is not even taken into consideration. You can just see the value. For example, RVNL, which is the top position. Its six month rank is two. Its 12 month rank is one. And the final rank is three, which is basically two plus one. You take any random like prestige. Its uh, six month rank is 21. 12 month rank is seven. And its final rank is 28. Nowhere we are taking nine month into consideration. You can, I can remove this code uh, part of it also. I just put it. Uh, if someone wants to tweak around of having uh, 136, 69, 3912, whatever that you want, you can do it here. And you can change the values here. If you see the final rank, I put six months plus 12 months and I multiplied the nine, ra nine month rank with zero. And hence this became a dummy. So you can always change these numbers by removing uh, for six months I take for every month I take it as 21 day 21 trading days so if it is six months it is 21 into 6 126 if it is one year uh, 12 into 21 and if it is nine months 12 into 9 into 21 so that way you can play around with the returns of different months and get the values so let's see what all stocks are coming up in the current uh, as on 15th of August so I'll first go through this list of stocks that I already have I have uh, RVNL Oil, I have and then Trent, Dixon, <coughs> BEL, Siemens, Motherson, Cummins, uh, CG Power, GSW Energy, and Vedanta Limited. These are the 11 stocks that I have right now. So I'll have to pick four more stocks from the top. So the four, first stock is Masdoc, which was there earlier in my pro, uh, portfolio. I had exited because of the stop loss getting breached. Then uh, Zomato, Suzlon, and Kalyan Jewelers. So Meta was also there uh, some way back in the April, April, May month, I believe. So these are the four stocks I will be picking. Masdog, Zomato, uh, Suzlon, and Kalyan Jolas. Now, when I pick these stocks, I wanted to tell this part also. Let's say whenever I exit a stock because of the stop loss being breached or because worst rank loss, worst rank uh, held is also breached, then what happens is that that stock gets exited. When I do a rebalance next month, if let's say the stock again comes up, the top list, then there's no other alternative but for me to purchase because that is what the rule says and I in, uh, enter, uh, enter into the stock. But if that is also a sign that this stock is going out of volatility. And there are a couple of ways to avoid this of unnecessarily jumping between uh, a stock which are moving up and down. One way is to have a cooling off period, meaning if uh, any stock gets exited from your portfolio uh, because of the stop loss or the worst rank held, then you, see you have a uh, cooling off period which is defined as let's say maybe two months or three months saying that within this three months, the stocks which have been exited, I'll not purchase again. That's one way to ensure that you don't get in and out. Or the other way is to uh, uh, ensure that you do not end up purchasing full amount for the stocks which have come up into your portfolio and exited immediately, maybe in the next rebalance. If let's say you want to, uh, if you want to take, you don't take 100% exposure, you purchase only 50%. If it stays even after one rebalance, then increase it to uh, another 50%. So I'm going to follow the same uh, principle right now. So all the stocks that I had earlier purchased, like in fact, Masdog I had, Zomato I had, Kalyan Jewelers also I had. So it's not, I don't have, I think, uh, these four stocks, I will not enter with 100% position, 100 position. I'll enter with 50% position after maybe uh, 
a week or 10 days or two weeks or so i'll see if it's still above uh, within the 20% if it's not breaching any exit rules then i'll add another 50% so that's it so that is it about the strategy that i have uh, i'm going to follow now let's quickly take a look at the back tested results so i've done a couple of back tests based on the last uh, 10 years data and by the way this is uh, this is taken into consideration the survivorship bias so all the stocks which were listed delisted uh, merger demerger whatever has happened that has been taken care of and uh, we have also compared uh, five different strategies here uh, i wanted to quickly show you these results we'll again do a deep dive on sunday now this strategy this is the box uh, that you have to observe so this was the strategy that i was following uh, one three six month and um, rebalanced bi weekly so this had a cagr of 21.11% over the last 10 years with a three year average rolling that is the important metric that i usually follow because this is the mean case or the best case that or not best case this is the most probable case that might happen rolling returns that we'll have to look at instead of point to point this was around 19.46% with a drawdown of 31% during the covid crash and uh, it had a overall transaction so 1841 whereas uh One three six month. If you do a rebalance monthly, it has a uh, overall transactions of one four three zero for the last ten years, and uh, average rolling returns of around eighteen and eighteen one point one five percent. This is the Nifty benchmark just to compare, and uh, you can also compare it with the Nifty two hundred, Nifty two hundred momentum thirty. That also data I'll show maybe in the Sunday video, and we have uh, this is three uh, six and twelve month rebalanced. Two weeks. This has a returns of average rolling return of around eighteen point seven one, but with lesser number of transactions one three five one. This was the best of the lot. That is six and twelve month with uh, rolling returns tad lower than uh, the one three six bi weekly. But look at this number. This is the number that was clinching or moved me more towards this because uh, towards a longer time uh, time frame because uh, it's almost half. The number of transactions that I do over the last over a period, let's say ten period, ten year period, you see that from eighteen forty one to we come down to one zero four nine, almost half the lesser number of transactions, which definitely adds to the alpha. So apart from this, we'll also take a look at the risk adjusted returns. Basically, this is nothing but the returns divided by the volatility, and uh, we'll also see that this Sharpe ratio is also not that great in terms of the simple ROC. In fact, when I say not that great, it is almost equivalent to a simple. Uh, Return on change or rate of change strategy, and uh, yeah, we'll do a deep dive on Sunday to discuss more about the uh, back testing results, and uh, also take up any questions that you guys have on uh, Sunday. All right, see you guys. Have a nice day. Bye.